smell, the taste. Here in the heartland, it's more than a habit, it's a religion. Even though no Ethiopian will admit to you that they are addicted to coffee, they would drink it at least two times a day. That's part of it. If, if they have a job, they would drink it at, job, at, at their work. The unemployed will probably find a way to drink coffee, even if they don't need the caffeine. Wanis and Mashasha runs Tomoka, the family coffee shop in downtown Addis Ababa. Just a sense of belonging. It's ours. We drink it. It's produced here. We don't we don't import it. So it's I think that that satisfies anybody. The Ethiopian Highlands is the home of coffee. Centuries ago, grazing goats tried the beans and started behaving wildly. So the goat herders tried them too. How they came to dry, roast and grind them is a mystery. But the elixir has become one of the world's most popular beverages. And nowhere more so than in its homeland. Ethiopians love coffee. And coffee is our source of income. It's our pride. It's how about 80% of Ethiopians live. They are coffee growers, and it's our number one foreign uh, uh, foreign money earner. So, uh, in every sense of the way, you can say that coffee and Ethiopia go together. The elaborate coffee ceremony is an important Ethiopian tradition, a way to get together and socialize. The ceremony is not just about drinking coffee, it's about what, what, what you're talking about. The family gets around, get, gathers together within, within that coffee ceremony. So it's, 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 a, it's a sense of belonging with, within the family. Each family will, will do its coffee ceremony every day. What we know from history, uh, the ceremony started with all the, uh, the uh, Arab, uh, it's related to the Arabics uh, who came to Ethiopia and who actually took our coffee to Yemen and, uh, and uh, developed it, uh, the drink. So I think uh, historians will probably tell that it came from the Arabs. It's a lengthy process, but Ethiopians make time for it. Even with the, with, with the busiest person, he probably will have his coffee, traditional coffee ceremony either at lunch at his home or dinner at his home. So it will never fade away. Coffee and socializing are intricately linked outside the home too. On the city streets, the coffee shops are full. Deals are struck, hearts are won. You'd be forgiven for thinking the city runs on coffee. Ethiopians average four cups of strong Arabica coffee a day. It's all part of the routine. For two times a day, uh, 8 a.m. in the morning, and then the afternoon I come 4 p.m. But economic strain is showing. Some of those four cups are bought on the pavement for pennies. One, one problem is that coffee uh, is becoming uh, quite expensive here in Ethiopia for local consumption. Uh, even though uh, each Ethiopian needs his coffee every day, they will get it in some way or another, either at home, the coffee shop, or on the road. At the... So uh, prices are different. At home, it's actually cheaper, but the problem is time constraint. On the go, on the, on the coffee shops like ours, it's a bit expensive for uh, low-income people. Even a bit middle-class people find it a bit expensive. In a coffee shop, you'll pay about 50 cents. For 10 cents, you can buy a cup from a street hawker. A familiar sight on the streets of the capital, with her flask of home brew and her china teacups. In this coffee nation, you're never far from a cup. There is a way. You can find it at home, coffee shop, on the go, hotels, restaurants, everywhere you find a cup of coffee. This is the best coffee you'll ever have in Tomoka. <laughs> yeah.